Woot woot. So we're back with another video of mine. This is the third installation of the series. I have no clue. Oh yeah, I had those out corn. And what a flame. I listened to, I re listened to this. Beautiful. Really. Man, fucking 10 out of 10 album. Fuck man. Gotta check out more of this guy. It's a water flame. The dude is called Waterflame, he makes mostly game soundtracks, so this is a rare occasion, the album. Uh, but this one was a 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, we stopped at this one. The dude, uh, Hans Strunk, they called him uh, Tricycle, yeah. That's where we stopped, blah blah, I'm gonna see him in October. Another shake, beautiful, full-on psychedelic trance, uh, they have quite complex melodies. I know I mentioned a Boris Artist compilation. Uh, basically, I want to get every album of them because they do great music thing. The newest stuff, some shitty EPs, and some kind of medley. This uh, totally sucked. Uh, Benny Benassi presents the Biss. No matter what you do, no matter what you do to do, something like that. Uh, always a lot of uh, male and female aesthetics. Uh, Benny Benassi has great production styles, uh, even though some very commercial house stuff is going on, uh, I really enjoy his sound and his unique kind of production. Even though it's the most mainstreamy shit, you will always hear that it's, um, you can crystallize his sound out, out of the mass uh, in regards to other house users, uh, producers, not users. We got uh, Helmet. Unsung the best of Helmet songs. Helmet, uh, I enjoy every album except Seeing I Dog. That was kind of somewhat bad. It had two or three tracks that I liked, but the rest of it you could throw away. Uh, most of the Helmet records uh, are highly enjoyable uh, for me personally. Octopus Galore, The Abyss, Heads or Tails is the label. I think I showed you this in the vinyl version because usually I should have. Yeah. Wandu Project, uh, King of My Castle, uh, Roy Malone's King Edition, that's the important part about this. The King of My Castle, would you shout, motherfucker? Yeah. The Roy Malone uh, King Mix is the important detail here. The original one uh, kind of sucks and uh, there was another track, uh, You're the Reason. You're the Reason is also quite good from one new project. Uh, so, I don't know. The rest of the album, mediocre, somewhat mediocre. Uh, a Dominant, that's the other, uh, other album from, uh, I don't know, Horizon, something shit. Very generic shit, uh, not recommendable. Uh, we got Spongebob, the best day ever. There must have been a reason why I chose these three Spongebob records. I know there are a lot of records out there, but I guess these three were the ones that I couldn't get online my hands on. Then we got uh, Panacea, basically. Uh, this is, uh, what was it? Disorder 2nd Gen. Uh, noise, breakbeat, drum bass collaboration, position chrome, of course, uh, Panacea and some other unknown dude. Or was it this order, second gen? Was it a pseudonym? I don't know. This album was okay, but not his best. He's done better. And here you can see him somewhat on the front cover. But he's done better. Uh, sadly, he doesn't put out anything anymore. It's very quite random. Uh, Helmet Monochrome. When this came out in... Let's see. How old was I when this shit came out? Came out in... Huh? No fucking... Wait. I gotta... I gotta check this out because I even kept the bill of paying this album. Uh, buying this album because it was so good. Uh, gamma. Blow. I got the lyrics. The beautiful smell of the paper, but wait, 2006. I was 15 around that time, so I was 16 even. The record was 
really new monochrome. And uh, it was the soundtrack for the second or third installment of uh, Saw, for the horror film series. I had a, cons a song in there, I think an outro song or something like that. Back then I didn't like Saw. Now it's kind of uh, funny and not so bad after all, but I'm, yeah, I'm Helmet Monochrome, highly recommendable album. Uh, Jack Rocker vs. Betty Boo, mm, take off. This was somewhat commercial house song that I also enjoyed, even though so very cheesy sound. Uh, there were some allegations that she did, uh, you know, she didn't sing her songs live, she had uh, playback going on. And that uh, somewhat destroyed her career, but not completely. And yeah, we got another Cosmics, uh, Ernie and Friends City. Fructus, welcome to the internet. This is a uh, comedy electric trio. Two of these guys uh, do a lot of comedy, blah blah, blah uh, whatsoever. The third dude, I don't know, not really. Well, these two here can also see in the middle, Heinz Sturm, they called him Tricycle. The stuff I began with on the video. Uh, we got the Tobi and the Bo, Genie and Wahnsinn liegen dicht beieinander. Uh, somewhat conscious rap, but uh, I don't know, a little bit too whack, a little bit too soft. More, no, some funny parts, but I don't know, just don't work for me. Blue Control, uh, Breathe, a very great instrumental, I know uh, that the instrumental is still booming around the internet. I stumbled over this in a hentai dress-up game, well, this was the first one. Uh, then the second one was uh, Shoe on Head, uh, a famous female YouTuber, uh, with, what was it, the other dude? Skeptic Armor, they do a lot of uh, feminism videos and all that stuff and uh, they also use this as outro. Uh, uh, either this or Gorillas Kids with Guns. Uh, Trans Love Energies, Death in Vegas. And this is the first CD that uh, Richard Fearless did alone basically. Not much help for him. After all, he did most of this all alone. There are some great uh, allusions and puns on there, if you get the record and listen to it uh, more than once or twice. Mm, Your Loved My Acid uh, was even featured in a L'Oreal uh, lipstick commercial or some... Uh, I don't know, they used this always for these... Uh, what is it? Fashion shows, yeah, fashion shows. Uh, Theory Corporation, uh, Radio Retaliation, uh, beautiful top uh, album. When you listen to it, you basically will taste uh, mm, some rum in your mouth, and uh, you you think you're on the re radio. Rebel Station and you're fighting with guerrillas, uh, guerrillas in uh, Brazil or something like that. Feels definitely like a Freedom Fighters album, fighting for the good thing about against capitalism for the little man. Uh, this is where they dropped in quality, Con. Uh, what was the one that I somewhat liked? Uh, Purple Pill? Oh, fear is a place to live, not let the guilt go. I think Let the Guild Go was the one that was, for me personally, the best. The other songs downward, somewhat downward for me. Um, I would say this is their most unique record. Frequent Alicia also had very experimental shit. Here they tried out a lot, and most of the time they didn't fail. Um, seen it all. Beautiful track, Twisted Transistor of course, uh, Coming Undone was quite popular, Tearjerker, okay, but could be, could have been done better. We got uh, Death in Vegas, Satan's Circus, 
uh, this album. You might think this would sound really metal like uh, hardcore brutalish, but it's a very nice, easy to listen to, um, soft listening, easy jazz somewhat, partially, some ambience, some drums, some very soft uh, Kraftwerk electronics on there. And the second one is a live album, Live at Brixton. But the first one, especially Anita Berber, the ninth track you can see on there. This is the track I'm remixing right now uh, for about three years now, uh, almost four years that uh, I started started to started to mix the track. Uh, still not finished because I'm a lazy fuck and I have a lot of other shit to do. What else do we have? We have uh, Ostkreuz, uh, Gangbang. This is the album that I didn't I use it there also. Yes. No, I don't know. Uh, we got this. This. Then we are on uh, System of a Down. The album is called System of a Down, or first album, whatever you want to go with, want to roll with. Um, this album, listen to the ma many times while running, especially when being a edgy teenager. Still enjoy the lyrics, still enjoy the sound. Nothing's changed. Very unique production in regards to the third or no the fifth fourth or the fifth album by system of a down and you re in, com in regards to this one you'll see a drop of quality uh, we got uh, alice is die sekte by uh, aids we all ts uh, this is a great rap album if you understand German rap and so whatsoever. I grew up with this when being uh, in a foster home with other kids and uh, a lot of these tracks have quite some humor in it. You will see a bloody mic on there. Never understood what it was until I looked closer and then further. It's a mic that's uh, bleeding out because somebody got this so hard that it bleeds, I suppose. That's the joke somewhat there. We got uh, technical itch and diagnostics, uh, very very dark neurofunk drum and bass tech step album by technical itch. This dude fucking kicks ass even after 20 or 30 years or so. Uh, beautiful production value, uh, especially the last track. Yeah, you can you can see the tracklist on there, but uh, this dude made a lot of great records. Highly suggest his original style of production. We got. Uh, Snake River Conspiracy, uh, what was it? Sonic Jihad. Uh, this started more uh, as a fun project for band, blah blah. Uh, actually, the album is not so bad, even though it's uh, poppy and somewhat indie pop rock. I love you songs on there. Breed uh, got very famous because of. I know what you did last summer, some other shitty horror love uh, stalker flick and a lot of songs on there are cool because they are greatly produced. Sadly they didn't put out another, I wish they, they've done another, the second one and then and if it sounded shit you could have said just and you know, well, they got a commercial e blah blah. I don't know if a single band members of if every one of them still does other things, but should check this out, what they did. Uh, we move over to Helmet, Born Annoying, the very first EP or album by Helmet. Uh, or was it the second? Either way, very harsh and raw sound. After the following albums, it got softer somewhat, but not in a bad way. Uh, the, the, the singing, the singing mainly got uh, somewhat relaxed, you know, almost sleep, uh, hypnotic sound like Coburn, uh, yeah, was that the same name? Yeah, Coburn is the band, and Coburn is the name. On the left side you see Pete Martin, on the right side uh, Cass. Pete Martin is slight, you know, I mentioned this dude before. Uh, kinda okay, could have been better, could have been worse, but not the best. Yeah. Uh, Iggy Pop, Lost for Life, uh, Train Spotting, and uh, Iggy Pop, basically. Lost for Life. Passenger, 
that's also as famous on there. Uh, one of the last two songs was also quite good. And uh, the album was okay, not too bad, not too good. We move over to Tim Axel. Uh, new, Tim Axel's Nuisance Gavel Red Launch, uh, where he looks awkward to a bunny girl, which is dressed very sexily with a baseball bat, some other chick, and this is mainly a live Gabba hardcore techno breakbeat jungle experimental thingy going on, where he uses all his effects to uh, amaze his uh, viewers and listeners. And uh, this dude is programming right now uh, VST plugins this is his main thing right now less music output but more programming for certain program VST things yeah we got drum from cool again this has some tracks I think three or four tracks that also appear in GTA 2 in the movie trailer for GTA 2 the coming game there was like a six or seven minute movie trailer especially made especially made for GTA 2 which was kind of a big deal when you think about just a shitty game I say shitty and then they have the seven minute epic trailer with real person to people to get you in the feeling of being that gangster dude uh, what is his name Speed Claude or Claude Speed something like that and uh, yeah also uh, Moving Shadow, uh, collaborated, being basically a very English sound, uh, a lot of funk samples and all that stuff. Uh, Kala Kala Chakra, I don't know how to speak that shit out. Crawling to Kaza, Crawling to Laja, some Indian village thingy has some drone and ambient tracks this mainly started as a cultural project as far as I got it and uh, what was the track oh there aren't any tracks listed on there but this is the 2001 version of the 1972 release track called Lights. Uh, yeah I got this because of one track and I read Reddit it, yeah. Oh, we got uh, Shipman. Uh, full English breakfast. You see coffee and cigarettes and some floppy drives and a fork. This is a breakcore album mm, by Shipman. I listen to other Shipman records, but I want to listen to more of him because I don't know many of them. I ordered this because I got it cheaply with some other CD I ordered. And uh, Breakcore is uh, always good to go for me. You know, Breakcore makes me feel good. It's just quintessence of life. Oh, Après nous les deluge, or I don't know how to spell it, Raison d'être, the first album of the uh, Swedish dark ambient noise Dude, Peter Anderson. You can see uh, this is the special deluxe edition with bonus tracks he made. Well, I especially asked him for the second or third track where you hear some radio sampling things. And I, uh, I asked him where he, did, where he got the speeches off, and he said he just turned on the radio and uh, basically fiddled around the radio and got some speeches and recorded it and put it in the songs. Massive Attack, uh, what was it? Blue Lines. Massive Attack uh, also had some great albums. You see another breakbeat, left field, down tempo, whatever, group formation from England, UK. They got mainly famous for, uh, what was it? Uh, teardrop, uh, the, the intro of House MD. What's next on the list? Uh, Death in Vegas, Dead Elvis, great first album, very funky, and some psychedelic rock and breakbeat on there. Mm, so, yeah, 
the last tracks get more and more experimental, but not wrong to listen to that stuff. After this first album, some people left, and after every album, some other dude left on Dead and Albus. L7, Hungry for Stink. L7 has a lot of great albums. This is. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Uh, yeah. Nothing to mention here because L7 is great and you should know about every album of them. We got another 8 WRTS uh, Agro, well, this is the uh, gar nicht so schlimm EP uh, with a Zido in the front cover. Also, here you can see his 8 fingers uh, like Freddy Krueger with uh, 8 syringes, blood filled. Uh, yeah, also. Great comedy tracks in there. Very sinister and dark humor. Some people might not enjoy that kind of stuff. You gotta, you gotta see the big picture here. This dude made shit like that, you know. Also that blood trail, fucked up horror and all that shit. And now he's like a family dad and everything is good. And that what he's rapping about. He's he's feeling good and loves the life in Miami. I think he lives in America now. I don't know. Oh, uh, zero experience lane. Great soundtrack. Great anime. Both 10 out of 10, a very nice production. There were also some bootleg CDs out there, or still out there, but they're fucking expensive. Like one CD costs around 100 pounds or so, just to get an MP3 quality. Uh, this one has wave and costs like 10 or 20 euro. Definitely worth it, because uh, the soundtrack just fucking kicks ass, man. Yeah? Then we go over to Helmet Size Matters, the second worst Helmet album, because the tracks on there were alright, but not 10 out of 10. Okay, something feels off here. Uh, let's go over to one of my absolute favorites over the years CJ Boland, Electronic Highway. Uh, the last tracks aren't that good, but the first tracks are. But then there's Neuro Paradox. Now, Drum Tower is beautiful, and Horsepower Live Remix is nice. Tower of Tai, Conspiracy Neck Plus Ultra, Zenith, until the. This is Tai Chit. Bones, Catharsis, Catharsis, Spoof Remix, Neuro Paradox are not that good. But overall, I give it somewhat 10 out of 10 because he really tried and he really succeeded with this one. CJ Bowman did it. Uh, since a lot of years he doesn't put out anything anymore, I watched some interviews uh, where he said something like, uh, yeah, I got some kids over here that's helping me getting into digital instruments and all that shit. Since then it's getting very quiet around him. Uh, Demon Species, Advent of the Blue Redula, uh, Regula, Regula, nicht Redula, not Regula. Uh, this uh, appeared this year, this one appeared this year. Uh, tracks are okay, but man, not that top notch. Could have been better. There was potential there. We got Adele, Sk Adele Skyfall. Uh, this is just one single track in two version, versions, once with the singing This is the end and the other one's the instrumental both great, 10 out of 10 was worth the buying for 5, five euros so. mm. Fuse, Dimension Intrusion this is very solid back to the roots, acid house, techno and ambient uh, I remember I was working with some outlandish dude and a friend of mine and we were somewhat collecting trash in our workspace and this dude, he blasted this album like so, he fucking blasted it all the fucking time and didn't think so, I just thought that this would be commercially acceptable but this dude really liked the techno sound in there of the 1990s, never thought of it I, just, I wanted to even to give him this one as a present but then I missed the chance, you know, it's like one second Sometimes in, in certain work areas you have one second to say something or to do something and then it's too late, then it's over. Because then happens something else and something else and the day is over. And uh, yeah, that was the thing going on there. We got Edgar Wasser, 
Tourette-Syndrom EP. Like uh, this one is also very cynical and dark and uh, this is basically the first EP. This isn't even EP, uh, an EP, this is an album. That's the next joke on, a joke on there. And uh, I know that I bought this some um, years ago when I was still going to school. And uh, it's worth also listening to because this dude has also serious issues with everything. And that's quite important for a rapper, I would say. It's always useful if you have complaints about everything. Clued, uh, casual bodies. Okay, GMB record could have been better, could have been worse. We got Corn Life and Rare. This is the second version of this one. No, there is nothing new to this. Uh, this is actually not a good record. But I remember I was in that foster home that I mentioned earlier, and some other dude stole it for me, and he got in, into serious trouble. And uh, well, I will never forget that. You know, he just stole the CD for me. I don't know why he did that. Why, why would either I'm like a dictator and I can manipulate people, that's the first thing, or this dude was just too friendly to everyone. And after some while you might get ripped or fucked because of that. It wasn't me, I, I explicitly even told, so, uh, told him so he don't need to steal, you know. That was his kick, he, he also mentioned something like, uh, no I love to steal from there, I do this all the time. And then he gets busted. Uh, he listened to a lot of uh, rap records, he also knew some of these Royalty S stuff and uh, I think that's why he got in trouble because of all that gangster rap because you know gangsters always say some shit like yeah I'm gonna kill your motherfucking bitch and then uh, some kid listens to it and kills some bitch quote bitch some girl and then uh, he gets into trouble and then he thinks uh, he will get away with it because he's a gangster and then he is uh, prisoned uh, to life sentence or for electric chair to his 18th or 21st birthday. <laughs> kinda, kinda sinister shit going on there. DJ Starstream, the new leader, um, the DJ from Slipknot I mentioned earlier before. This uh, has a lot of, um, what's that to say? It's not even, some tracks are jungle, some tracks are metal and noise and hardcore gabba. But. The last tricks are not that hardcore anymore. I mainly go with jungle, even though that's not really fitting. Uh, very varying uh, album, sometimes minimalistic. Uh, I would say give it a listen, but it's not too necessary. And now decide for itself, but it's a uh, good record. Uh, let's move over to. Rogue Audio, Hazard, also Pete Martin production featuring Cass, oh, I don't know, uh, also not a good album, basically I just uh, praise uh, Pete Martin for Slide, the Unstable album, after that he basically did shit, but still, I respect him for this one album, and now he has somewhat, uh, an I almost infinite amount of uh, possibilities to fuck with me, you know, with every shitty album he's putting out. But nowadays he's just producing or mastering, I don't know. And the next thing is there is an album he made with three, with three or four other dudes called uh, UX. Uh, what was it? Uh, Universal... Ux. Ux was the name, UX. And uh, Masters of the Universe was the main track that was booming back then. And they remade this album 15 or 20 years later with some bonus tracks in there. Now there's a new cast where in UX Pete Martin isn't in there, he got out, because he didn't like it, I don't know. We got uh, Hargicht, uh, Mein Hobby Arschloch, uh, which translates to, uh, my hobby being an asshole. And, uh, the first intro track is very sinister, after that very funny comedy shit. Hamlet, in the meantime, really great tracks on there. Uh, in the meantime, Ironhead give it unsung, especially famous because of GTA San Andreas. If he's bad, better you borrow of blah, role model. Uh, yeah, 
very good album. We got uh, Dark Ambient Radio Volume 3, Muzak for the Final Elevation. Uh, I listen to a lot of Dark Ambient Radio on a certain station, on a certain website, and some dudes made a compilation of three CDs because um, everyone could submit a, trick, a track, even I submitted a track, but uh, it got declined. It wasn't uh, worth to put on the CD, no. Uh, but still, there are great tracks on there. I think I should re-listen to this one again, because they were quite expensive for like 15 or 20 euro, and I got myself all three of them. Helmet, strap it on. Was this an EP? I think this was an EP. Also nice, flaw, beautiful track. Uh, it's a bad moon. This is a great album, also somewhat aggressive. Not too aggressive, but somewhat aggressive. Mm, we move over to Hammered Aftertaste. This is good, but it's not, not as good as the other two I mentioned before. But it's better than uh, Size Matters. Uh, I listened to this a lot when I first uh, downloaded it from the Mule when I was like 16 or so. It's way back, you know. And, uh, this is Simeon Mobile Disco, Murmurations. These dudes have very interesting production styles. Uh, the first album I liked the most so far. I gave the other albums not so much of a listen, but this is the newest one. This appeared like two months ago. 2018. Uh, yeah, this is the main problem I have with this is uh, they cast somewhat a female choir, of a certain female choir with a certain name. They also do live stuff, and uh, some parts don't fit with uh, singing and electronic elements. Other than that, it's great. Sometimes it fits, sometimes it doesn't fit. I don't say that they don't work together or that, that I don't enjoy female singing. I wish there was. I wish there was a good female singer. I don't mean that vibrato shit that ah, all these R&B girls do and still didn't. I, I get I get vomiting crabs when I listen to that shit. Now it's basically about uh, good female singing. Uh, Ali Mutter, a comedy C by FCD about uh, how great his mother blah 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 is to him. I bought this because of another CD that I might mention later on and then you will understand what I meant by this. Oh wait, just we can do this now. This is the other Ali Döner oder was. This is a somewhat funny yet unfunny CD. I, it's a pseudo fun, very bad lyrics and that's why I bought it. enjoyed it because of the bad lyrics. Uh, then we move over to... Uh, let's go to prison. Beautiful comedy, comedy movie and has a great variation of stars in music. Uh, directed by Bob Odenkirk, the dude who plays Better Call Saul. Uh, some lawyer dude, uh, some sketchy lawyer dude, and in Breaking Bad, the sketchy lawyer dude. And Bob Odenkirk did a lot of comedy, and this one was greatly directed with beautiful twists in it. You know, uh, you want to watch this movie and listen to the soundtrack. Seriously, the movie is better than the soundtrack, but there were some tracks that were, were very important to me. Let's go to prison. It was the track mainly. Uh, JBO had been boing, a comedy metal group. Uh, I basically basically got this because other people didn't have it. There are some tracks that are somewhat okay, not too unfunny. Um. This track, right? Uh, what, what do I say? What, what am I talking about? This album right here. This is uh, Turntable Bay. No samples. On there you can see uh, a girl rejecting a vinyl for sampling to buy because there are no samples on this CD used. Completely original. The Blaster and Red Boy. And they. Uh, Basically, uh, what was it? Have you know, Icy Cake is a great track. And who's the master? Put the heat on. Sweet Skins, Visual Purple. 
Freestyle Freaking was uh, a thing to track that appeared on the Blade movie. That's why I got that CD, because otherwise you couldn't get that fucking track anywhere. Except when you bought that fucking CD. And uh, it's an okay album, but uh, wait. Freestyle Freaking is top notch. Icy Cake. I enjoyed Icy Cake. And I sampled me and my drummer. Live in New York. The irony being, I sampled their no sample CD. Yeah? I hope I won't get sued further in the future. That wouldn't be good because I'm a very, very poor fuck at the moment and I'll get even more poor in the next uh, future months or so. Uh, we got Asus, Acid Save Your Soul, uh, Hardcore, Hard Trends, Acid with uh, Kytracid. I don't know if Kai Tresset is on this one or the other one because Kai Tresset left. How did he? Is this? I think Kai Tresset is on this still on, but on the next CD afterwards, he got missing because Kai Tresset doesn't do much anymore. Or is he, he's too commercial. That's always the, the main issue. They always go commercial or they don't do anything anymore. Noisy pipes out of sync with this world. A mixture between dark ambient and side trends. Very interesting. Seriously, there were some interesting production skills involved in this. I stick this out so I will listen to it maybe later on again, so I won't forget. And uh, we got corn. See on the other side. I bought this CD twice on Müller, uh, a store where you could buy records, at least in Ingolstadt. And uh, I got this usual version and the special asshole version because I'm such a special asshole. It's asshole back then I didn't know better. I gotta say it wasn't worth the extra money. The usual album is always sufficient, almost always sufficient. Uh, Sizex Expressions of Rage. Uh, big Sizex fan. This one's very. Uh, melodic, very interesting sound, uh, highly recommended if you're into Psytrance, very complex Psytrance especially, music is the key, love great, I either found this in the trash or my aunt gave it to me, there were some okay tracks but I'm not a big fan of these compilations, I don't, need what, I don't know was it even mixed, no, these are singer tracks but still, not a big fan of compilations. Um, we got Prodigy, The Fat of the Land, 10 out of 10 album. Uh, this was played up and down all the time. I know there was an area like for, for two or three years, Smack My Bitch Up was played daily on a daily fucking basis. The music video was played on a daily basis because they were so fucking into that sound. Uh, Firestarter is a cover from L7. Climatized, beautiful sound and fuel my fire. A lot of great sampling and editing and playing by Liam Howlett, who you can see here. He's the main dude. These dudes uh, dance and they do some little lyric shit here and there. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. There's also uh, in the. If you know the Firestarter video, Firestart was also sampled by Gene Simmons, the dude who was the main front singer in KISS. And the, in the background here, right there, is Flint. Let's zoom into this guy. Whoa. Where is it? There you can see him. And the... Uh, Flint was the side band name cover, and uh, they also they, they did the intro for a uh, Helsing anime vlog. Yeah, that was them. Then we got Sizex Come in Peace. This is my oh, fuck <laughs> my favorite Sizex album because it even has a music video in glorious Technicolor. The album is somewhat of a concept album. It has some some kind of story, I would even say. It's uh, produced like an album, like like a concept album with a story behind it about UFOs taking over the world. 
and the intro, blah blah, and the bonus video, survival kit, Koopa Troopa stop mix, survival kit, you should listen to the original, and the Koopa Troopa dub mix, both are beautiful, the music video is also nicely done and rendered in 3D, and uh, sometimes over the years I watched this once, we got the uh, altered stays, puzzle, the final piece, this puzzle final piece contains samples of Hellraiser, not the mind as a puzzle, the labyrinth, or what, what was it? Something like that. Yeah, a lot of great sampling and a beautifully play with sounds. Jimi Hendrix, the Experience Hendrix, uh, the best of Jimi Hendrix, best of album. If you know Jimi Hendrix, you know what you get. There uh, are at least five tracks that I enjoy. I think there would be many more if I took uh, the time to listen more into it. Apple Seed Alpha Original Soundtrack. There were, were very interesting dubstep songs and electro techno songs in there. I watched basically almost everything in regards to Apple Seed. And uh, this one was very cliche, love, blah blah, story she like. But the soundtrack was great. Even two CDs. Here, yeah, you can. What is wrong, seriously? I'm sorry with this. Why don't I put on some light and then we can see this fucker? So when I go here and I show this. And you guys should be able to see this. Yeah, does this look good? Yeah, this looks good, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's continue with the other CDs. Mm. The sweet. I showed you these guys before in vinyl form. Uh, they introduced me somewhat to rock and roll. Blockbuster, Ballroom Blitz, Fox on the Run Action, I Raise a Wig, Wham Bam, Teenage Rampage. As a kid, uh, uh, I enjoyed every song on this because I didn't know any other tracks, and then you automatically like that shit. But I love the harsh, but not too harsh, rock sound of it. You see some psychedelic background color thingies, you know. Um, as a kid I gave it a 10 out of 10, but nowadays I don't know, 8 or 7? It digresses over the years because of no other rock albums. Uh, progressive, Go Trans, Volume 4, compiled by DJ Slater, whoever the fuck DJ Slater is. There are some cool tracks on there, but other and that it's a generic production, so fuck off with it. We got Kitty Charlotte. Uh, I like Kitty very much. Uh, I loved Kitty very much. The older stuff, the new stuff got worse and worse and worse. And they sound so fucking boring nowadays. I just want to distance myself from their sound. But if they ever start making good music again. <laughs> uh, Dark Emmon Radio Volume 1. As here you can see volume 1, so I guess there will be volume 2, and yes, indeed, there is volume 2. Huh? Volume 2. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next Death in Vegas album, and the Continuo Sessions, uh, great, but not too great. Here we have Scorp, uh, Ipso Facto, my favorite album for many many years and still, great production by Eddie Connor, I wish he would put out another album, but it got quite around him, this dude has talent and fucking style and everything he touches, beautiful. Uh, this compilation, Abram Cabra, also Scorp, somewhat related trick music. The funny thing in this is uh, Ortsel's Machine, uh, Scorp, Prison, Squid Ink, Fabian, Prison vs. Fabian, The Hoax, Ram, Ortsel's Machine. These are all uh, Jod Onsen and Eddie Connor and some other dude, always somewhat. You no, know, basically, this is 
a usual album, not really a compilation. That's the joke about this, I guess. Uh, also, Kitty Brackish. Nice music video and album thingy. Did I show you this before? I don't know. Uh, and we're left with the next staple. So, I should pe put back on the other covers. Just give me a sec, and then we can progress. What's still left? We are almost through, to be honest. But this will be another video. I won't finish it this time because there's one last big piece missing. But, uh, yeah, I have some other shit to do today, like playing and organizing and playing some more. I got into modular synthesizers and I need to learn more about that shit because it's so fucking complex that I need to. Uh, manage my website, but I don't think this morning bomber will put you in a high mood and we'll talk about that shit. Yes, yeah, so let's see what we got here. We have uh, Sisex Healing, a very progressive sound with very unique, uh, unique ideas. The first, the Sisex album where one of the two dudes is only in the game. But here and there he has a featuring with some other dudes. Uh, what I like about the Sisek records, the newer ones, uh, this one is packed like this. The newer ones is also packed differently. And uh, here you can see the featurings and how they're written. All string samples. Polly Carol. I'm trying my name master. I even asked Sisex for some of the samples in there because they were so great and he even responded. Quite cool dude. Uh, uh, we got uh, Falco, Mutter der Mann mit dem Kochester. Very upbeat techno song with uh, very German lyrics. Uh, and uh, sadly this dude is dead, but he made great sound. And music and tracks and what's so not. Ron DMC was Jason Nevins. It's like that. And that's the way he is. <gasps> yeah, a uh, great singer with music video, original, and the remix of Jason Evans are beautiful. Uh, why do I put this one out? I can put it back there again. Why would I do some shit like that? How could you treat somebody like that? Could you know I'm never coming back? Why? Just one biscuit, some. That popped up on my uh, hallucinogen, uh, twisted, very psychedelic trance with uh, old school analog synthesizers and digital drums machine produced. Um, twisted Records, great label, has a lot of good artists. I'm still following this one because they never somewhat disappointed me. We got Caliban, The Undying Darkness, German. Uh, hardcore uh, metal, thrash metal band. Uh, when this came out, I listened to it for to this uh, like two weeks straight. Um, the other missing album, um, The Lone the Ranger. I might listen to this while writing. You know, Dimension, Shaky Shaker, Transept Hologram. Oh boy, this album is so fucking trippy, you won't believe it. Now it builds up and rises up. Everything is recorded. Rinkendink uh, used to do a lot of, he has like two or three great albums. The other stuff, just boring shit that sucks. He mainly does progressive and sells single tracks because that makes the most of money. He even told me so. Uh, I didn't say, tell you this, guys, but that's how the music scene goes, you know. Hallucinogen in dub. Uh, he mentioned a lot of times that he got into dub more and more after the years. That's why I tried uh, this one. And then I think always when I'm high on acid, like, the more relaxing the sound, the better. Maybe that was the approach here. I really can't tell. We got the other Rexophone Ost number two. And then there should be falling up Rassophone number one that I mentioned also before. Great anime and series and soundtrack and whatnot. Great concept. But uh, there are also other CDs too. 
suspension like wrinkling rabbit from the dark side red from the dark side is not as good as this uh, pirate signal wrinkling cd pirate signal is definitely better produced i need to re-listen to this one again um, system of a down toxici toxicity uh, like it's uh, you know also good album i'm basically just showing you guys these covers and saying good album because there's not much to mention i need to re-listen to this one i basically thought since slipknot somewhat died at that time around all hope is gonna appear that it uh, by slipknot and it was so fucking shitty and trashy and corn put out their shitty albums and i thought limbiscuit gonna fail too but no they didn't this is a great album and it's not as good as the other ones but he didn't at least fail as hardly they, the band didn't fail as hardly as, as Slipknot and the uh, Corn did in my opinion uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory soundtrack it's kind of funny yesterday we played uh, Hitman and uh, listened to the Splinter Cell soundtrack in the game because sometimes game soundtracks get repetitive you play a level and then you listen to the song and then hey I listened to this like 20 times I want to hear some own shit so, so you drop something into your playlist and, and it's better better for the experience you know uh, Count with Transistor Singer not worth the buy just for one or two tracks Korn coming on down big fanboy as I am I just bought this on the main blah blah store where I got it uh, Slipknot, the first Slipknot album, nothing to mention here since it's a solid rock, solid 10 out of 10. I have a lot of 10 out of 10 albums. If Anthony Fontana would see me here, we would think, uh, how could you throw away this number like that? How could you throw away a 10 and everything? I gotta say, these are the records that I bought over the years, like uh, 20 or 14 years or so. And uh, there are a lot of 10 out of 10 albums. That is true. But, you have to think about the fact, I, uh, digitally, I possess like a uh, hundred times the amount, or even a thousand times, and uh, I think I have like 200 top 10 albums, and like 5,000 albums that are 9 or less. Basically, the most, rating, uh, most rated stuff will be... 5 out of 10, logically, because that's the middle, that's the, some of the main standard, and a lot of people just produce main standard sound. They don't try, even they, if they could, they wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Slipknot, Iowa, uh, very harsh, hardest hardcore harsh sound ever put out. Literary uh, blah blah thingy. Vida, it's called in. German, I don't know what it's called in uh, English, I just can't uh, remember the name right now. The third Slipknot album, that's where they got somewhat soft. I don't know how you feel. And all that shit that once or twice appears, other than that it's hardcore. Really cool blasting sound. Then there is Cold Cut. Videos and remixes, sound mirrors. Uh, did I watch the videos? Yeah, I think I watched the videos. Or didn't I? Mm, if not, I should re-watch this shit again. Yeah. Mm, cold cut, always mention worthy. Definitely. Now let's switch hands. We have Limb Biscuit, significant other... What's happening with the fucking camera, man? Oh, boy. I'm just breaking my CDs. I'm a big CD fan, as you can see, because I'm breaking... All my CDs. What's up with this? Okay, now it's unsharpened. How about resharpening? But this is also too much. Or is it? No. This looks the best right now. Unsharp, unsharp, very sharp. Okay, from Biscuit, significant other, and uh, yeah, also not a 10 out of 10, but 8 out of 10 album, because great tracks, but once or twice it fails. Uh, 
Fabric Life, Death in Vegas, uh, somewhat generic uh, DJ mix by one of the two or three Death in Vegas band members at the time. Um, Lobster Club. Uh, as a kid, I was often in a hospital because of my asthma. I had a lot, a lot of uh, breakdowns of my asthma, you know. Always I inhaled like two or three dust particles and immediately I was like, <gasps> so I had to drive. Uh, so I had to be driven to the hospital and uh, then I was also in a hospital school sometime. And uh, that's where some teacher gave me this CD. Uh, and I liked it, really. I expected it to be very shitty stuff, but uh, when I listened to this man, whoa. This was like just basic rock sound, not too complex, not too shitty. Yeah, might we listen to this again in the future, hopefully. Uh, Shaggy Bombastic remix versions. I think there was a jungle. Wait, let's see for it. Uh, original 7 inch. Stone Ridge Vocal Mix, we'll get to Firefox, for Firefox and 43 Bass Boom Remix, Sting Shaggy Remix, Boom the Dancehall Dub. This was uh, yeah the Sting uh, Baba 4 thingy, that was the Jungle Remix and I expected so much more but it was okay. A Linkin Park Crawling in My Edge, um, Chester Bennington is dead because he didn't enjoy what he put out I guess. Uh, somewhat understandable, somewhat not. If you're already into the mainstream stuff and you're rich, so you could just say fuck it. There's no use in killing yourself because I always think uh, if there is a god out there, he's a sadistic fuck and he always, um, if you kill yourself, you just lose the experience. It's like uh, you kill off your character and your character loses all the experience and you have to level up again and uh, the third or fourth time it's kind of uh, getting annoying. Now, I know you forget about the process of learning and growing and all that shit because you get recycled as a soul, but but here's the thing. Uh, uh, I, luckily, I don't have to go to school again, yet again, hopefully. Uh, it's not a Benjamin Button case in my case. Then... Uh, the other thing is, what, what did I want to say, uh, yeah, right now, it's uh, somewhat comfy living as me, I can't complain uh, in regards to my time that I have, but in regards to the money that I make, but this is another topic and uh, I might come to that some other time. Uh, we got Lust Mod Heresy. Great Dog Ambient album, listened to this many times. He has, this guy has like 50 albums out there. Uh, his big uh, body of, uh, who is it? Maynard James Callahan or Maynard blah, blah, the front singer dude of Tool. And uh, they also did some collabor collaboration dub remix albums and some. Times again he does stuff for his own, but very, very busy dude. He put out a lot of shit. Can't say he didn't make much. Uh, disturbed. Well, uh, uh, um, mm, believe the first album made by Disturbed. Some tracks are cool on there, some tracks are not. This is a solid uh, 4 or 5 out of 10 case. Because why would you produce such an album? I wouldn't if I had the choice. But then again, I'm me and they are them. Yes. Uh, Limbiscuit, The Unquestionable Truth, Part 1. Uh, the Key, The Propaganda, The Truth, The Channel. Very great EP. Uh, when this came out, this was like uh, nothing else appeared from Limbiscuit a long time. And, uh, there was an hiatus uh, of the biscuit, and I thought, like, seriously, what will they put out next? This made quite the impression on me. I listened to this over a month or two months. It also has some horror music video and all that shit. Very experimental guitar by Wes Anderson, and uh, 
really enjoyable, but they never put out uh, the unquestionable truth part two. Let's see when this will happen. Mm, okay, let's put this fucker back here. Then we have Flynn Biscuit presents chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. This also this line also appears in some track. I don't know which track, but in some track it appears. And the uh, Roland Urban Assault vehicle is a fucking shitty tr remix. Uh, Air Raid vehicle is better. And uh, there is also a poster in Scary Movie with that album cover. This is the most successful one of them. And I somewhat understand why, because a lot of production value went into this. You can't say that they didn't try, because uh, Fred Durst stood somewhat real after all those years. And the funny thing is, there was a conflict between uh, Korn and uh, Limbiscuit, and Korn made fun of Limbiscuit because of Behind Blue Eyes, a record that later appeared, uh, like uh, two albums later after this one, or the next one. It will, yeah, we, we will see this one, I will show it to you then. There are there. And uh, Korn made fun of uh, Limbiscuit and Fred Durst because of that behind blue eyes track and said fucking faggot tracks, we don't want to do anything with you guys anymore. And they got into conflicts because of that shit and, and their friendship ended. What a great friendship if this ended because of just that shit. And uh, what's now? The th <laughs> yeah, the, the, status, the status right now is Limbiscuit are still true to, to their fucking sound, they produce rarely, but they produce very good, and uh, Korn just throw out shit and it sounds repetitive, they have lost their sound. So, Behind Blue Eyes might have been a soft shitty track that also still is playing on the radio and has very high commercial success, but they never lost their sound actually. Somewhat this fits into the Limbiscuit uh, category, while Korn, they don't sound like Korn, they sound like any other shitty band. And it hasn't even to do anything with uh, new metal anymore. I listen, re-listened to the newest album from uh, 2017 or so by Korn, and uh, I couldn't think for the hell of it uh, what they tried to say with this record. This, this had no meaning. Fuck man. Uh, that's why I have high expectations in these guys. They never somewhat failed me. There's a fucking shitty remix album out there, uh, Limbiscuit remix album, but uh, they didn't do the remixes. I hope so. And that's why they're still one of the better bands out there. One of the very much better bands. I'll put this one here. And now the memory cartridge says I have only one minute left of recording before this shit will stop, so we'll still talk a little while, just to fill that fucking safe thingy, I guess, and uh, 60 minutes left of battery. So, in these regards, I'll stop the recording, and then there is only, like, I don't know, 20, 60 records, I think, let's say 50 or 40 records, and then uh, I'm finished with my series that I hope you guys will enjoy. Uh, I would say leave a like and rate and subscribe, but you won't since I can see that shit and nobody likes my videos, but I put them out still because I just love thrashing around with uh, YouTube, you know, I just want to fill YouTube service with, with garbage, that's my main goal. Look at that fucking sign, look at him, he's high as a kite or as a star, <laughs> oh fuck man, his eyes. Okay, that's it, and have a nice day or some shit like that. Bye.